Kaori, good morning. Very glad to talk to you. So, Mika, you, you were born in Kyoto, Japan, Japan, and uh, you live and work um, in uh, Yamanaka Onsen, right? Yeah. You, you are now in your, in your home and atelier? Yeah, this is my, the view of my studio. Um, well, the, my work is hanging on the walls and, um, well, um, I don't know this. You can see these, these are the Gumpy tree fibers I use for my paper making. Mm -hmm. Fantastic to see, to see. Could you just wait a second? My next door is coming. Just, I, I need a 10, 10, 10 seconds. Sure. Sorry, just very yeah, short. Yeah. <laughs> no worry. <laughs> sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. That's no worry. So we we are in your in your atelier. You just show us the show us the the, the gampi tree hanging um, on on the window. So this is a very fascinating aspect of your of your work. So that you make your own paper. Actually, you make your own made handmade paper. Of made of gum tree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though my artworks are made by my handmade paper, and that use all natural materials that's grown near my studio. Mm -hmm. So you you go you you harvest the the gum tree. Yeah, I climb. I go up the mountain to harvest all gum trees myself. Mm -hmm. When is when is the harvest for this? Uh, well, the best the season to harvest is just once a year. Uh, that's um, usually the the first or second week of April. Mm, okay. Tree fibers, yeah, tree fibers mm. uh, get really rich and thick mm -hmm. in winter season. But uh, we can't climb the mountain because it's covered by heavy snow. Before we see uh, green in the forest, uh, it's the best season in this area in Japan. And it's, it, it's see, you know, there is many greens and then it's very difficult to find one particular tree, which one is Gumpy tree. Ah, yeah. It, it, it's difficult. It's not so easy to recognize the, this tree. Uh, yeah, man, there's many similar trees uh, in the mountains. Because this gampi tree, he has a, a particular quality that is good for paper making. Yeah, gampi tree is a uh, one of um, traditional raw materials for Japanese paper, and uh, we use the tree bark, the bark uh, for paper making. Um, it's the texture is extremely uh, strong and uh, but smooth like silk. Uh, so you, you bring it back home, you, you, you harvest the tree, you bring it back home and then how many how long do you need to, to, to make this paper? How long is the process of paper making? Oh well um, for the on the same day of the harvest day, I uh, strip all barks from the tree and then uh, wait until like the tree gets dry in um, like for one about one week. It depends on the temperature. It's good sunny, dry day or rainy days. About it needs like about one one week after. Um, it's ready to use uh, for paper making. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this becomes the support for your cyanotypes, right? Then you, yeah. you create your sheet of papers, and and then you you make your your print uh, on this on these sheets. Um, why did you why do you use this technique of cyanotype? Uh, yeah, it's very um, good question because uh, everybody like yeah yeah ask. <laughs> Everybody's asking you the same. <laughs> does, it, does the, this technique um, 
fits yeah. very well to the message that you you would like to 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 communicate or to the it's very related your your subjects are very related to nature do you think that this technique of of cyanotype is is um, is very good to convey actually this this idea that that you you like to transmit uh yeah i really think so because i want to use natural natural substances as much as possible and this technique needs very safe chemicals uh, for uh, human and environment. Mm -hmm. I use sunlight only in the garden, my studio. Uh, no UV printing machine. Um, that uh, During exposure, I'm always trying to observe and feel uh, what's happening outside, like feeling the, the sound of uh, the stream and the sound of the uh, bars and uh, um, the um, what the air and what uh, what the condition of the weather and uh, watching the crowd moving, like many things I I want to discover. The subject of your of of your cyanotypes. Uh, some photographs before. Uh, well, for like printing land landscapes, I I take photographs and prepare um, negative black and white images. Uh, I think that's a uh, normal way for cyan type this technique. This technique. Um, but, and for like uh, when I put motifs directly like for making photograms, um, I, I follow that the feeling of the moment I found I find the object whenever I find the object or some like piece of flowers and a piece of um, object like food. Um, and uh, I got imagination in my head and then I just try on my paper. Like I need just a very short time to complete the one artwork. So it's very related to, to your environment. And to the the nature around your 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 house and atelier, right? Uh, yeah, exactly right. You 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 always do your work in Japan, or you sometimes you also realize some works outside of Japan when you when you were abroad, for example. Oh uh, well, I I go abroad, but I my work is all like almost all like uh, created by using the image. That's uh, in Japan, uh, and uh, the creation is all like uh, it's done in my studio uh, because I I was born I originally from like, Kyoto as you explained and uh, uh, grown and live in the city and living in the nature was one of my big dream before I discovered this place like um, about eight years ago and uh, after I moved to the mountainous yeah, after I moved to the mountainous image uh, village here uh, I I'm surprised and inspired by very peaceful and spectacular views near my house and um, it's, it happened every day mm -hmm. So moving here in this place uh, had an impact on your work. It really, it really get you a lot of inspiration. And, uh, and yeah, I was also very, in, I'm also very interested in the, in the notion of, of time within your work, because I think with the with the COVID COVID nineteen that we experience these current times, we really had to. Actually, experience, we, we experienced and felt actually time very differently. We had to slow down. And um, when we see your work, uh, we see that there is a very long process. Uh, yeah. And I was wondering, what is your relation to time and, and, and how, uh, how yeah, if you could develop a little bit this idea of time within your work? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, 
Well, um, well, actually, I felt very safe to keep creation here because I usually work uh, by myself alone and uh, I'm touching the nature and uh, using the source of the nature. So um, I had uh, uh, my work uh, has no, no change, almost no change. Uh, for like uh, uh, the condition of my and well for my work um, like uh, embracement like uh, and acceptance are most important actions. I spend a significant amount of time to feel nature through all of all the process, like shooting photos, making papers, and uh, printing cyanotype. Um, when the weather, for example, when the weather is sunny, I get very busy for like, I have to do all, almost all processes, like paper making, um, printing, and shooting photos outside. And I get very busy and work very hard. And when the weather is cloudy, I slow down to work for paper drying and exposure of the image uh, because of less sunlight. And uh, when it rain or snow, it, I can't work outside. And uh, I did, and, uh, this area, it's uh, located in Japan seaside. Uh, this place rains a lot through a year. Um, the first and the second year, very difficult to accept the environment and the climate here. Uh, I, I get um, like upset and irritated a little bit. But um, once I comfortably um, embrace the condition and I'm getting to love of any, all changes and natural changes, and I felt that uh, my mentality has got stronger than, much stronger than before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite amazing because through your work, we see that you actually you connect to, to nature, to the seasons, to the rhythm actually of, of, the, of the earth more, uh, to the natural reason, since you, you follow the season to harvest, but also when you said, depending on the, on the weather condition, then you have to adapt your work as well. So, um, and there's something very, very meditative as well in, in your work, right? Uh, yeah, and I, because I, yeah, I feel very comfortable always. Like most of the time I, I touch and feel natural materials, uh, gumpy trees uh, and uh, the process, stripping the bark to get fibers and uh, uh, using spring water and having sunlight and observing the color of the blue on my paper. Do you also do, I saw that on some of your works, you add some pigments. Uh, do, yeah. Are you also making these pigments yourself? Uh, well, I, I, that's, uh, I, I use, no, I, I use pigment uh, for, like, made for Nihonga. Uh, that's, uh, traditionally, uh, it's a uh, traditional Japanese painting uh, with uh, natural glue. Uh, but I, honestly, I'm very interested that what uh, the color, what color, uh, and what kind of materials used for the color, and what uh, the original uh, materials for the, uh, the, for example, like blue is. It's made by like some uh, blue rock and uh, white color is made of made from like sea cells and uh, um, I guess in the future I I might I would try yeah, to you could find it. everything around you as well. Thank you very much. It's very interesting to hear uh, to hear about your work and. Um, you were represented by Ibasho Gallery in Belgium. Yeah. And yeah. We, we will see some, some of your works will be visible 
as part of our online uh, virtual edition of Photobasm. Have a good continuation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's my great pleasure that um, uh, that uh, the uh, your art fair, like uh, you have um, my artworks and uh, and you on your exhibitions and. Uh, I'm very happy to see. Uh, I, I'm very happy that uh, I can show my latest um, works uh, like uh, content.